Today, the Southeastern Conference Game of the Week features a battle of unbeaten nationally ranked teams, number one Florida and number 12 LSU. The Gators will rely on the strong right arm of senior Danny Werfel, who has thrown 14 touchdown passes, only two interceptions so far this season. Werfel's favorite target this year has been junior Riddell Anthony, who has seven touchdown receptions this year. LSU is off to its best start in years under second-year head coach Jerry DiNardo. DiNardo has brought his no-nonsense approach to the Bayou, and the Tigers have responded with a 4-0 start. Led by sophomore sensation Kevin Falk, the Tigers are upset-minded today in the Swamp. It's Florida and LSU next on Sunshine Network.
So Florida wanted the football to start this game. This is a, a big sequence, I think, man, more for both teams. If LSU can stop the Gators, uh, that really swings things early in their favor. Backers are doing a lot of blitzing as we get an errant kick here. Gators get the football in good field position. So Florida will take uh, the football on its first possession. As you look at Danny Werfel, the senior from Fort Walton Beach, who has completed 62.5% of his passes and really has been right around that percentage throughout his football career. He holds 32 records whether it be Southeastern Conference, University of Florida, or NCAA. 32 different passing records this young man possesses, and he is just a solid candidate for the Heisman Trophy this year. Finished third in the balloting last season as a junior. Werfel has all day to throw the ball, and Ikelier is all alone in LSU territory. Down he goes at the 40-yard line, and a penalty flag is thrown. Well, David, they caught him in a in a zone defense. I I hear you running a square end. Riddell Anthony doing a good job of clearing through the middle, getting that free safety out of there. Easy catch and throw. And we had a face mask pull by freshman Mark Roman. You look at Florida's offense. Dwayne Mobley will start at fullback, but we'll see Terry Jackson in that position today. And, of course, the Gators are loaded at the tailback position. The offensive line uh, really anchored by the center, Jeff Mitchell, the two tackles, Pillar and Young. Very young in the guard spots, and that'll be a key to watch as LSU has some big, tough people up front that could give those young offensive guards some problems today. But after the face mask, the Gators are first and ten at the LSU 35-yard line. Hand off to William Eli. About 10 yards to the 25 of LSU. Alan Stansberry, a linebacker, number 43, was there to close in on Elijah Williams. There's that front four. Williams, Theo, has five quarterback sacks already this season. So he's a big play man on that end position. Their linebackers very sound with Stansberry, a senior. Rogers, a senior. Charles Smith, a freshman, but very talented. And in the secondary, this is a solid group. Seniors, Walker, the corner, Donaldson, a junior, and two youngsters at the safety position, Roman and Hill. Werfel trying to connect with Hilger, and the play was uh, well covered by Cedric Donaldson, the left side cornerback for the LSU Tigers. Well, Hilliard had a step on him, David, just slightly overthrown, but, you know, that's what the Gators want to do. And talking with Coach Dwayne Dixon earlier in the week, what they want to do is come up and three-step uh, drop and just try and get it out there either on the hitch or the quick takeoff. They feel they can get the ups on these corners. Very difficult to cover good receivers and a quarterback that can lay it in there. On the little option action here, Elijah Williams five yards to the 20. Rayon Hill, a sophomore from New Orleans, number 21, is there to make the tackle for the Tigers. Well, that was an excellent tackle by Rayon Hill as he's isolated on Elijah Williams, one-on-one -on -one in the open field, and he puts the head gear right in the number, squares up, make a good solid tackle, brings him down. Third down play for Steve Spurrier's Gators at the LSU 20. Jacquez Green stumbled off the line of scrimmage. The pass is incomplete, but let's see if LSU was in the neutral zone or if they were drawn off sides by the Gators. Good voice flexion by, by Danny Werfel was able to pull him across, but the Tigers got lucky on that play because the Gators went through with the play, and if Jacquez Green does not lose his footing, he catches it on a slant. He's into the end zone. Flexion. Danny Werfel has a good does a good job year round of using his cadence to pick up extra yardage, and he just used it to get a cheap five, giving him a good third and short situation. Danny Werfel with a lot of options here on third down and inches. Two down territory for first down. Let's see if the Gators go for broke. Nope, they'll play a conservative this time, and Werfel cuts that football in. 
in behind Big Senior center Jeff Mitchell and picks up the first down. Well, anytime you've got a All-SEC candidate, a, a uh, potential All-American like Jeff Mitchell up at the center slot, there's not much to do but get behind him and follow that horse. Gators first down at the LSU 13. Mobley and Williams, the running back. Riddell Anthony, touchdown Florida. For David, Danny Werfel throws the corner route as good as any quarterback in football. Not just college football, but I'm talking about the pros. You know, this guy just has a knack of trying to fit that football at the back corner of the end zone and just letting his receivers run under it. Tremendous throw and catch. You know, when you've got a receiver like a Riddell Anthony that has tremendous speed, you know that all you've got to do is get it out there and hang it, and he'll go get it. Good concentration. And just a beautiful throw by Danny Werfel, his 15th touchdown pass of the year, and still only has thrown two interceptions this season. There's the extra point by Mark Edmiston. And Florida takes the football and marches down the field on their first possession. And this is a fired-up football team and sellout crowd in the swamp. We're early, but the Gators are on the scoreboard. And for the sixth straight game, Florida has scored a touchdown on their opening drive as we take another look at Moore. Just a little play-action pass, and he's looking out to his left side for his favorite receiver all the way, Riddell Anthony, and has plenty of time to get the ball in his hands and get his feet down. Good execution by the Gators. The scoring drive, very impressive. Soft touch of Danny Werfel. Good blocking up front. Little option action, little option play, uh, one of those six plays on that drive. So Steve Spurrier showed them a couple of different things on their opening series. LSU's got to be reeling a little bit defensively when the Gators come out and stick it right down their throat. Well, you know, LSU had the opportunity to take the football, but they wanted to kick it away and play defense, hopefully get the ball in good field position. They find themselves down 7-0 uh, before they get the football will kick off. There is a stiff wind out of the northeast and uh, it's going to be at Teague's back as he kicks this way. And with the help of that 15 mile per hour wind, Matt Teague kicks one deep and LSU will bring the ball on out to the 20 yard line. Let's check with Larry Vitell. Larry? Well, David, you were just talking about the wind, and that is going to be a factor today in the ball game. Kind of blowing out of the northwest the way it feels down here, but when you get near the end zones, you get a swirling effect. It seems like it's always in your face, but the wind did favor Danny on that fade route to Riedel. It favored Matt Teague on the kickoff. LSU doesn't want to have to throw. If they do have to throw in this first quarter, they're going to have to throw into the wind. LSU's first possession. Quarterback Herb Tyler. Tigers trying to run the ball, and look at those orange helmets. Javon Kurtz, Lawrence Wright. As you look at Herb Tyler, who's had a pretty good season, the sophomore from New Orleans, completing 58% of his passes. Six feet, 194 pounds. Uh, this guy took over last year after the injury to Jamie Howard and has been 8-0 as a starter. Well, he's done, the good, he's done the job of doing the things to help his team win. You see the four interceptions, but those four interceptions have not hurt him so far. And, you know, that's what he's tried to do. Hand the ball off to the guys that uh, run well with it. Don't throw it much. Don't cause problems. Well, you talked in the open, uh, Nat, about the Gators lining up seven and eight, and that's what they've done the first two plays. And LSU has had no chance to run the ball as Chester and Rutledge made the stop. You look at LSU's offense. There's their backfield. Fought very good. And uh, the fullback, Tyler, also can uh, grab the ball and run with it. Their receivers are very good. Their offensive line, sound on the tackles. Bordelon and Wells, outstanding seniors. And LSU is looking at third down and ten. Swing pass to Falk. They try to get him out of the open field, but that gator speed and pursuit is just too much. Lawrence Wright and Fred Weary were all on top of the play. 
Well, that's something that the LSU Titans didn't have to contend with last year. Last year, they didn't have a Javon Kurtz and a Johnny Rutledge at the linebacker slot, and these guys can run, David. We talked about it at the top of the telecast that they want to try and keep everything inside, and if not, then they've got to be able to get to the sideline and make the tackle. Florida's defense, as we said at the top of the program, improving week by week. Chad Kessler, the junior from Longwood, Florida, the Orlando metropolitan area. Jacquez Green. Turns the corner. We got a flag down, though, as Green steps out of bounds at the 34-yard line. A block in the back, I think, after a 25-yard return. But uh, I think John X. Knightis might have blocked an LSU player in the back, and that is going to be the call. But Jacquez Green, who electrified this Florida field crowd a couple of weeks ago with two punt returns for touchdown against the Kentucky Wildcats, almost carried that one all the way, except it's going to be brought back. But well, David, the exciting part about that run back is once again, you see Jacquez step out of the arms of a tackle. For right, Hilliard, covered by Denard Walker. We mentioned that Riddell Anthony has been on a roll lately. In the previous two games, coming into this one, against Kentucky and Arkansas, Anthony had a combined 16 catches for 315 yards and five touchdowns in the last two games, and already a 13-yard touchdown reception today. So six TDs receiving in two games plus one quarter. Another short drop. That's on time to Ike Hilliard. First down. Back into LSU territory at the 40. Tackled by Denard Walker. Gain of 15. They are so difficult to stop. Even in bump and run coverage, they find a way. Three-step drop. Beat your man inside. That's just a pitch and catch. Not even bad coverage by Walker. But they'll do that up and down the field if you can't get to Danny Warfel. Mike Hilliard is the cousin of former LSU great Dalton Hilliard. Went on to the NFL, had a fine career with the New Orleans Saints. 7 0 Florida. Gators on the move again. Taylor up the middle. Across the 35 and down at the 33. Brought down by Pat Rogers with help from Alan Stansberry. Gain of seven. <laughs> this is what. LSU is up against the Gators 21 and 1 at home against SEC teams under Steve Spurrier. They've only lost two of their last 25 homecoming games here, although they don't usually play an opponent as tough as LSU right. on homecoming. They haven't lost since Auburn in 94 since Steve Spurrier's been here. It's just tough at home in Swamp. Taylor, the lone running back, took the handoff and got very little. Perhaps back to the line, maybe a half-yard game before Anthony McFarland, known affectionately in Louisiana as Booger, made Check. the tackle. Watch 94, nicknamed by his mom, Booger. They double-team him all day. He still makes the tackle for no gain. This guy's one of the best young defensive linemen in the SEC. 6'1", 290. Said he's got an older sister who happens to be tall and thin, so her name is Treetop. We were asked how he became Booger. I asked. Yes. I'm not sure we, we want to know. Third down and two. Taylor straight ahead. Hit by Stanford. Drives forward and appears to have the first down. Very close to the 30-yard line. Change just inside the 31. And they move the ball back just a bit. But it is enough for a first down. The strength inside for LSU is Booger and Chuck Wiley. He's taking on Kalick one-on-one, falls back inside. And, folks, just in case you're interested, I talked to Anthony McFarlane yesterday and asked him if it was okay to call him Booger on national television. He said, I wouldn't have it any other way. Booger, he shall be. 7-0 Florida. Gators, second possession and on the move again. Werfel wants it all. Intended for Ike Hilliard, there was contact, but that ball was going to be long. Even if Hilliard had stayed on his feet, it was not catchable. Therefore, no interference against Denard Walker. 
bottom right of your screen. This is just incidental contact. Their feet get caught. This is not any attempt by the defensive back, Denard Walker, to stop them. And as Sean already mentioned, it's probably uncatchable anyway. Florida alone atop the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference. Having already handled Tennessee, expected to give them a run for the championship in that division. The pass incomplete. A little bit behind Rudell Anthony. Greg Hill had the coverage. Hill has, has several friends on the Florida team, and they've been exchanging some trash talk back and forth in a good nature. In a way very good nature. Throughout way. the week. That's right. Gators told him to bring all 125 of his pounds here for the football game today. He said, if I weigh 125, they'll get all of it. And Hilliard's a Louisiana kid, and his girlfriend plays basketball for the women's team at LSU. Hilliard, Hilliard doing most of that talking in the direction of Greg Hill. Third down and 10, a blitz, and they have Werfel back at the 40-yard line. Allen Stansbury first there. Pat Rogers there to help finish Werfel off. That's a problem that Florida has had this year. They've now given up 12 sacks in five-plus games. From the right side, you're seeing 43. Missed block by their tailback, Fred Taylor, number 21. He's got to step up and pick up that blitz. Does not do it. That's a free shot for Allen Stansbury. And remember, this Florida offensive line is completely revamped from just two weeks ago. They had a suspension, and there's only two players in the offensive line playing the same position they did just two weeks ago. Robbie Stevenson on the punt. He's a sophomore from Bradenton. Kevin Hawk waiting for it. They punt it away from him, and they cannot down it inside the five-yard line. 40-yard punt. The net of only 20 as the ball will come out to the 20-yard line. LSU back on offense, trailing 7-0 when we come back. Sean McDonough, Mike Mayock back at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, Florida Field. Big stop there on defense for LSU. Everything was going against them early. Yeah, it was critical, especially they come out, give up seven points right away, and then they're three and out offensively. That was a key theory. On offense for the second time, three plays in front of the first possession. Tyler can scramble, but not away from the traffic this time. He got back to the 19, but Reggie McGrew will be credited with the sack. The red shirt freshman from Mayo, Florida. Now the strength of this Florida defense is right up front with their two defensive tackles. It, Reggie McGrew and Ed Chester. McGrew's number 92. Bottom left of your screen. He's going to be working real hard. Push, push, push. This is a coverage sack. Here comes McGrew late. Give him credit for the sack. Second and 12. 7-0 Florida, first quarter. Tyler with a lot of time looking deep for the tight end, LaFleur. And it's much too long, covered by Javon Kirst. You know, they got a decent matchup, but the Florida outside linebackers are such good uh, athletes. Javon Kirst. He was a high school tailback. He's 6'5", 239, and can run. So it's still a tough matchup, even if you get a good athlete on their outside linebacker. Sean, I'm a little surprised play selection right now with LSU. They come out, throw the ball the first two times. Mm -hmm. I think we need to see some play action, especially on run down. That's how you get your tight ends involved in the offense. Norris Watts, the offensive coordinator, said the... Major part of the game plan trying to run inside today. They've gone away from that on this series. Tyler trips up and down back of the 12-yard line. James Bates, the middle linebacker, credited with that sack, a loss of six. They were trying to run a smash pattern underneath the Chris Beard. Five-step drop. The defensive end, Tim Bochamp, drops off in a zone blitz look. He picks up the smash pattern. Nowhere for Tyler to go. He's not one of those quarterbacks who can go two or three receivers. He's not a drop-back guy. Kessler with a very short first punt. And this one is high. And fielded on a couple of bounces by Jacquez Green. And he is taken out of bounds at the 47. Crowd... Wanted a flag for hit out of bounds. Nah. The tackle started well inbounds. A 47-yard punt. A six-yard return. Back to Gainesville in a moment. Yeah. 
LSU begins the day a half game behind Alabama in the race for the title in the Western Division of the SEC. Alabama playing out of conference today against NC State, so an LSU victory would move them into a tie for first. Gators lead 7-0 as Danny Werfel brings them on offense for the third time again with great field position. He throws deep down the middle and caught by Hillier. Out of bounds of the LSU, 26. Chased out by Denard Walker. That's a gain of 27 for Florida. Ike Hilliard, now if one side doesn't get you, the other will. Anthony's already caught two big passes, so they go to Hilliard. He beats, once again, their best coverage guy, Denard Walker. The difference in that play versus their last pass attempt was the pass pro. The running back picked up the blitz, gave Warfel plenty of time. Already three receptions for 66 yards for Hilliard. for Hilliard, and Denard Walker had the coverage. Let's get an update from Pat O'Brien. Pat? All right, Sean, Syracuse has now taken a 10-0 lead over Pittsburgh as another special 44, Rob Conrad, goes in around left end from three yards out. Pittsburgh hasn't won at the Dome since 1982. And Sean, you were 10 years old that year. <laughs> Actually, I was a student at Syracuse <laughs> in that game. Old. At the time. Pat taking a shot. I was huh? 20 years old. There you go. A student at SU. The Orangemen back on track after losing the first two this season. And we'll see them in a couple of weeks at Boston College here on CBS. Werfel, four out of nine passing, going to the air again. And through the hands of Hilliard. That had touchdown written all over it. But Ike Hilliard couldn't gather it in. And Walker is getting a workout running up and down the field with Ike Hilliard. <laughs> Walker's tired, isn't he? Take a look right here in the block on the edge. On the three-step drop, the important thing is to cut the defensive linemen and get their hands down. And look at the cut block. It gives Warfel an unimpeded vision line and almost a touchdown. Travis McGriff, number three, has checked in as an extra wide receiver for Florida. Along back is Terry Jackson. We'll see some time today at tailback and fullback. Short drop, pass caught. First down, Florida. Riedel Anthony tackled by Greg Hill. Late flag thrown where the tackle was made at the 14-yard line. If the play stands, it's a gain of 12 and a first down. And it's a face mask tacked on to the end of the play. Second face mask early in the first quarter. A couple of buddies on each other. We've got Anthony, excuse me, that's Hilliard on Hill. Taking candy from a baby. Three-step drop. Little six or seven-yard pass. Looking for the run after catch. How do you do it with those guys? Riedel Anthony on the catch. Once again, Terry Jackson. The lone back. First and goal from the nine. Five and a half minutes left first quarter. Seven-nothing Florida. Trying to make it 13. And it's incomplete. Jacquez Green... Juggling it apparently as he went out of the back of the end zone. Covered by Denard Walker, who's been a very busy man here in the first quarter. I am constantly amazed at the touch and accuracy of Danny Warfel. There is not a lot of room here. It's good coverage by Walker. He's got to turn his head. Let's see if he's got it. There's the fumble. It looks like he's juggling it from that angle. Let's see if we can see it better here. He's got it there, but the ball's in the air. He's juggling. I think that's a good call. Mm -hmm. Second and goal from the nine. The other way. Flags fly. It was intended for Hilliard. And there was bumping in the end zone by Cedric Donaldson. And it appears he'll be called for pass interference. Now, I, I want to take another look at this one. I'm, I'm not sure. That looked like good coverage to me. Interference on the defense. The ball will be placed on the two-yard line. Let's see if he makes a bona fide effort to get to the football. See, that's where you get beat. If you're a defensive back, you've got good coverage. You have to turn around and look for the football. If you look, they won't call that. All you've got to do is get your head on a swivel and look around, and it's a good play. But if you don't look, they throw the flag every time. First and goal from the two. Florida leads 7-0, and it is Terry Jackson. Stop short of the goal line. Anthony McFarland to the bottom of the pile. 
as good an offensive mind as there is in the country right now. Watch number 94 right here. That's Booger McFarland. Double team. Look how strong he is. 6'1", 290 pounds. Beats the double team and makes the tackle in a goal line situation. That's why he was the SEC Freshman Defensive Player of the Year. Found and missed the season opener against Houston with a broken bone in his foot. And back to game two. Jackson pounding down to the goal line and he is short of the end zone. Mike Sutton with the primary hit for LSU. So Terry Jackson with a couple of tries can't get it in from the two. LSU defense is used to smash mouth football because they see it with their LSU offense every day in practice. Good job up front by Wiley and McFarland. Mike Sutton comes in and makes a tackle. Eighth play of the drive for Florida. Third and goal. Word ball. Touchdown. Jeff Mitchell is an all-SEC performer. He's going to go behind Mitchell and Corey Arbrough. They get a real good push against the defensive line of LSU, and it's a touchdown. Edmiston to try the extra point with his first conversion today. He's made 104 in a row, and he adds to his Florida record with 105 straight. And it has been all Gators here in the first quarter, the number one team in the country, leading 14 to nothing. Some say they not only have to win, but win big today because Ohio State has been getting closer to them in the polls. Yeah. Watch the push you get here and here. That's the key. The center, Jeff Mitchell, the right guard, Corey Arbro, they're going to come down, and as will their tackle, Donnie Young. Get the push inside, no problem. Linebackers three yards deep at the end of the play. Ohio State so impressive this year in posting that 4-0 record. They've been accumulating points in the poll and getting closer to Florida the last couple of weeks. We'll see Florida State here on CBS against Miami in the second half of our doubleheader. Yeah, I've, I've got a big problem that you have to win by a certain amount of points to stay where you are in the poll. You looked at uh, Penn State a couple of years ago. Here what we have right here, number six. Right there, big game with Miami playing against Florida State, which obviously follows us today. Watch for that one, folks. It doesn't get a whole lot more fun in the state of Florida than those two teams. And Steve Spurrier might be considered an authority on that game. He <laughs> told us yesterday he thinks Florida State has the better team, but historically they've had a very tough time winning in Miami, and he right. believes as most do that Miami's a much better team than they were a year ago. He also said he doesn't worry about national championships. He would rather win the state championship because if you win the state championship here, you're probably going to end up number one. Matt Teague with another unreturnable kickoff. This is 46th kickoff of the year, and half of them, 23, have resulted in touchbacks. Here's Pat O'Brien. All right, Sean, Northwestern, winner of 10 straight conference games, takes a 7-0 lead over Minnesota, as well as Darnell Autry. Scores one yard out. By the way, Sean, your alma mater has gone up 17-0. Back to Sean. Thank you very much, Pat, for the updates. Northwestern back on track after the opening loss for Wake Forest. This is a key series for LSU. They've got to keep their head and get back into their type of offense. I'd like to see play action here. They have minus two yards of offense through two possessions. They have yet to pick up a first down, and they aren't gaining any ground. It was Rondell Mealy with the carry, and Johnny Rutledge, the tackler for Florida. Mealy's a redshirt freshman, Rutledge a sophomore. The first and ten, Florida's going to load up against the run. They've got eight in the box. They can't wait to see Mealy or Falk get the ball off tackle. You've got to get them off balance. Play action, get your talented athlete on the corner, Herb Tyler, the quarterback. Neely remains the lone back behind Tyler. LSU now with minus seven yards rushing. It's the leading rushing offense in the conference coming in. The keep by Tyler, a good decision. And the first impressive running play for LSU gets the Tigers out to the 27 before Shea Showers made the tackle. LSU has not posted 
a victory in its history against the number one team in the nation. They've had seven tries prior to today. And the closest they have come was a 6-6 tie against Nebraska in Baton Rouge in 1976. Their last game against the number one team, a loss to Florida two seasons ago. Third and three. And they throw the flat. Neely with some running to do. He has the first down. Tackled by Fred Weary. Rondell Neely is out to the 35. Good for a gain of eight. They get the ball to Mealy, but the key block there was from their split end, Chris Beard, number 84. Remember, it's third and three, third and four situation. You get the ball in your talented tailback hand. Watch the block from the right side. Already happened. Allowed Mealy to get on the corner and pick up the first down. Mealy's a redshirt freshman from Destrehan, Louisiana. goes to Mealy, and he gets nothing. Back to the line, and that's all. Buried by the center of the floor to defensive front. Well, I, I really would like to see play action on first down. Florida's just loaded up. Eight people in the box, playing man-free defense. Here's Big Ed Chester. Yesterday, Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator, said of all the players on his defense, Chester's probably playing the best football right now. Well, he's got huge big play potential. He's one of those defensive tackles at 275 that actually can fly to the football. Florida leads 14 to nothing. 217 left in the first quarter. They came on a blitz. Tyler able to get it away, looking for staff. Watts caught. And then he fumbled, but recovered at the 38-yard line. It is a completion to Savoie, who recovered his own fumble, and LSU picks up 27 yards on the play. Often underthrown passes are a huge advantage to the receiver because he can see that it's underthrown. Watch the hit Tyler takes coming off the edge. It's a strong safety. Lawrence Wright. Now watch him come back to the football. No problem for Savoie, but there's the fumble right back on top. Shea Showers knocked the ball free, but Savoie able to fall on it. He's a senior from the cutoff, Louisiana. You would think he might be a baseball player with that, Nick, that moniker. Crowd roars on first down. Neely back into the line for a gain of two to the 36. Tackled by the right defensive tackle, Reggie McGrew. First down again, LSU not picking up any kind of yardage, just trying to run right between the tackles. Third or fourth consecutive first down where they went right after him and picked up nothing. LSU averaging 280 yards per game rushing. Not only is that best in the SEC, it's number eight in the country. They've had eight rushes in the first quarter this afternoon. Only three have gone for positive yardage. They go to the auction. Tyler inside the 35 and down to the 32. They don't run the option very much, but Jerry DiNardo says he wants to run it just enough to have the opponents have to be concerned about it in their preparation. And it's another way to make Herb Tyler a more effective quarterback. He's not a great drop-back passer, but if you've got to worry about something else other than the tailback, it makes your offense a little bit more effective. And this is the kind of third down they can be effective in. Third and three, third and four is a good situation for this. They can run or play action. Third down. Four yards to go for LSU first down. Good move by Tyler, but flags and whistles stop the play. Got movement all over the interior lines there. Red a dead ball. Illegal procedure to the snap infraction on the center. Be a five-yard penalty. Be a third down. Looked like Todd McClure, the center, double clutched on the snap. Yeah, I think you're right. The double clutch causes the defense to move. Watch the left part of your screen. You'll see a little hitch from McClure. Yep. Right there. That gets everybody to jump. They were looking to try and get the first down. Third and four. Little double clutch right there, but they get caught. Now, this is a tough situation, Converse. And now it's third and nine, and he's not a dropback guy. Gator showing blitz. They rush five. Tyler throws deep and too long intended for Larry Foster. 
inside the five-yard line. The coverage provided by Lawrence Wright. And it will be fourth down. Second half of our CBS Sports College Football doubleheader. Another battle between two unbeatens here in the state of Florida. Number three, Florida State, and number six, Miami, coming up from the Orange Bowl next here on CBS Sports. Doesn't get a whole lot better than one against 12, and then the big one, three and six. Fourth down. Quarterback still in the game, fourth and eight. Way they're going for it here in the first quarter. And Tyler wants a timeout. It, it's a tough call because the ball's on the 37-yard line. If you, if you punt and kick it out of the end zone, you only pick up 17 yards net. Back for the final five it's seconds of the first quarter in a moment. After the timeout, it appears Jerry DiNardo has indeed decided to go for it on fourth down and eight at the 37-yard line. Trailing 14 to nothing with five seconds left in the first quarter. LSU going for it. Four-man rush, well picked up. The pass is caught. Oh. First down, LSU inside the 10. Kevin Falk, a 28-yard game. And you know what? Anthony Lott was all over him. It's exactly what we talked about early. You gotta get your head on a swivel and turn around and look for the football. Falk sneaks out of the background of the right of your screen. Lott sees it and picks it up. Now you turn and run with him. Now you gotta look back for the football when he does. Too late. That's a great pass and a great catch. Well, here we go again. The same play. Pretty good coverage. Now turn around and look. Too late. Big, big play there for the last play of the first quarter. Gamble by Jerry DiNardo, and it paid off in a big way. That's the end of the first quarter. The score, Florida 14 and LSU nothing. We'll return to Florida Field after this message and a word from your local station. Sean McDonough with Mike Mayock and Gus Johnson back at Florida Field after one quarter. Florida leads 14 to nothing. But on the final play of the first quarter, LSU converted on fourth down and eight. And here is the tenth play of this drive, which started at their own 20. Defensive coordinator Bob Stoops is not used to his defense being out on the field for ten play drives. Great handoff. Fell on the football back at the 12-yard line. It was knocked out of Herb Tyler's hands by Javon Curse. I think Bobby Stoops was reading their mind talking about play action on first down. First time they come with naked bootleg. Curse is coming off the corner. Good job by Lawrence Wright keeping him inside. Runs him right back into Curse. The strong safety number four forces him back inside. And then the great pickup by Javon Curse. There's Mealy behind Tyler. They run the option to the right. Mealy has to do some work. And he avoided Shea Showers to get inside the 10. He's down to the 8-yard line. It'll be third down and goal from the 8. James Bate, the middle linebacker, made the tackle for Florida. His father, Jim, was the defensive coordinator here at Florida in 1990. It's a tough 4-yard pickup here. He makes defensive end Tim Bochamp missed then he makes showers miss but he's going to run right back in the base and the growth that's all effort by the tailback Neely and Falk both outstanding as Bob Stoops told us yesterday but it's been almost exclusively Neely and not Falk lined up at tailback for LSU here in the first half on third and goal threw a bullet in the end zone to Larry Foster and LSU is on the board. Same play that Florida uses in the red zone. A quick slant anticipating man-to-man -man coverage. It's the quickest pass and catch you can make in football. The quick slant, three-step drop, showers is off of him and it's not enough time for Wright to get there. Remember, Shea Showers is playing in place of the injured Tico Brown. And the extra point is blocked. Looked like Javon Curse blocked the extra point. 
first failed extra point by Wade Ritchie this year. Wade Ritchie's been inconsistent all year. Look at the way Kurse gets up in the air for that. Wow. 14 to 6 Florida. We'll return to Florida Field after this word from your local station. LSU got the touchdown, but not the extra point as Javon Curse, the redshirt freshman from North Fort Myers, Florida, blocked Wade Ritchie's extra point attempt. Jacquez Green, top of your screen. Riddell Anthony, bottom of the picture, waiting for the kickoff. And he is by about a 15 mile per hour breeze. The kickoff goes through the end zone. Now, when you try and block a kick up the middle, the two key guys to get a push are there, and then you need a guy about 6'5 with a great vertical leap in behind. And that's exactly what happens with Javon Kurse. They get the push inside. He elevates and gets a piece of it. That's a big, big play at 14 to 6'4. This is by far the worst field position to begin a possession for Florida. The worst start was at the Florida 35. They're in their own 20, and Worf will bring it to the line. The run on first down, and Elijah Williams cannot turn the corner. Rayon Hill up to make the tackle. Let's check in with Pat O'Brien. All right, Sean, thank you. Northwestern now leads Minnesota 16-0 in Evanston. A 66-yard pass from Steve Schnur to Dwayne Bates. Bates' sixth touchdown catch of the year. They missed the extra point. They later added the field goal. A big first quarter for Northwestern, 16-0. Back to Sean and Mike. And a big season for Coach Wacker and the Gophers. Better season for Northwestern. Coach Wacker trying to keep his job. 3-1 going into that game. Werfel scrambles, has a first down and much more. Out of bounds along the sideline near the 40. Danny Werfel pushed out by Pat Rogers, but it's a gain of 18 for the homestanding Gators. Danny Werfel 6'2", 209, and runs better than people give him credit for. Watched him in practice the other day. He runs about 4'6", 540. He feels the pressure, steps into the pocket, and now he's going to beat Booger McFarland to the sideline. Let's see where he steps out right there. Right around the 39, 40 yard line. Well, 49 remaining second quarter. Gators leading 14 to 6, and they've dominated their opponents in the second quarter this year. They 91 to 19, their advantage in the second quarter. This is, if, if you're LSU, this is where you got to be real careful because Florida generally <laughs> separates right now. Report. See you later. Back to you, Sean and Mike. Thank you very much, Pat. Welcome back to Gainesville, everybody. A big play of the football game so far here remains that fourth and eight conversion by LSU. Yeah, you've got to give Jerry DiNardo some credit. Fourth and eight. We didn't know whether he was going to punt, what he was going to do. He ends up going for it. A big conversion to Marshall Falk to set up the touchdown. Whirlpool play action. Wide open in the flat. Terry Jackson. In the LSU territory, and a first down for the Gators at the 40-yard line of the Tigers. Rayon Hill made the tackle, but busted coverage by LSU. Terry Jackson was all alone at the gain of 20. Terry Jackson adds a whole different dimension coming out of the backfield. He can play fullback, he can play tailback, but the one consistency is he can catch the football coming out of the backfield. Werfel once again senses the heat. Chuck Wiley in his face, and look at the touch. Doesn't get any better, folks. Roger Williams alone back behind Werfel, and he was up close. Werfel again with all kinds of time. Has his man. First down to Redell Anthony. Bernard Walker made the tackle, but Florida has a first down just inside the 27-yard line. A pickup of 14. Werfel to Anthony. I said in the open, I thought Florida had the three best wide receivers as a trio of anybody in the country. Watch the physical nature. He works off Walker makes the separation, catches the football. It does, you know, there aren't anybody better in the country than those three, Anthony, Hilliard, and Green. Florida on the move again, leading 14 to six. Early in the second quarter. Gators come to defend the blitz, and it is complete inside the five, Dwight Hilliard. 
Tackled by Cedric Donaldson. 23 more for Florida. And a late flag on the play, back where Werfel was hit. 10 up, Werfel read it correctly. The sight adjustment to the fly pattern. Look where he puts it once again, Sean. You can't reach out and hand it to him any better than Danny Werfel does there. Rayon Hill out of the game on first and goal. They might have hit Werfel late. You got Werfel in the pass on the defense. The pass is caught. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Adds injury to insult here. Real late. Rayon Hill, number 21. You can't take that shot. Can't take that shot. Will missed the start of the season with a broken leg. Came back for their big win at Auburn. First and goal. From the two, Jackson oh. head down and pulled his way into the end zone for a touchdown. You called that exactly right, Sean. Put his head down, made the defender take the brunt of the impact. Terry Jackson, six feet, 213 pounds, watched the hit on the middle linebacker Marquise Spears just wal waltzes him right back into the end zone. Lead play, one on one. He just bent him right backwards. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Jackson, sophomore from Gainesville. And Edmiston adds the extra point. 21 6 Florida after an 80 yard drive. We'll be back on CBS in a moment. Coming up next here on CBS Sports, the second half of our big college football doubleheader, number three, Florida State, and number six, Miami. Jim Nance, Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya on hand of the Orange Bowl to bring you that game as soon as we're finished here in Gainesville, where Florida has taken a 21-6 lead after an 80-yard drive that took just a minute and 54 seconds. Three touchdown drives for the Gators today, the longest of which was the first. It took two minutes and two seconds to go 65 yards. That's a long drive for them. This kickoff is returnable, Mealy from the six. And he's out to the 23-yard line, tackled by Mike Harris. An 18-yard return by Mealy. Now it's tough to run a ball control type offense, Sean, when you can't get it done on first down. They've had five first downs so far this game. They've got a grand total of zero yards. They've got to be more efficient on first down. High formation with Robert Tyler, the fullback, in front of Falk. And Kevin Falk is trying to turn the corner. And he gets banged out of bounds at the 25. Fred Weary put the hit on him. Weary made the hit, but Mike Peterson, the outside linebacker, is the guy that got up the field and made him bounce it wide like that. This time on first down, they pick up about two or three. Chamber of Commerce Day here in Florida. Temperature near 80 degrees. Breeze about 15 miles per hour. Making it a very pleasant afternoon for the 85,000 plus in attendance here at the Swamp. Kevin Falk now with Three carries for a total of three yards. Tyler going deep, has a man, and it is caught for a first down by Chris Beard in the Florida Territory at the 45-yard line. What a great pattern run right there by Chris Beard. Watch what happens to the corner. When he takes him inside, Fred Weary turns his back here, and then he allows him to come back to the corner wide open. Watch him turn the defensive back, number 24, Fred Weary, all the way around right there. And as soon as he makes his cut, wide open, seven yards of separation. Good pass by Herb Tyler. Right on the fingertips. Young wideouts for LSU, Beard just a sophomore. Tyler going deep again, again looking for Beard, and it is intercepted by Shea Showers at the seven-yard line. Herb Tyler cannot throw that up for grabs in this type of football game. When you give Florida more possessions, they score more points. 
double coverage. Shea Showers comes over the top from the free safety position. There's no opening there. Weary's got him inside. Showers is over the top. Don't throw that football. First interception of the season for Shea Showers. And makes four from that position, though, because he's replacing Pico Brown, who had three. Brown was the starter. Free safety, but injured his knee versus Kentucky two weeks ago, and is expected to be out for four to six weeks. Jackson and Taylor in the backfield. It's Greg Taylor with a big hole. Taylor across the 20. And tackled from behind at the 36-yard line by Rayon Hill. A gain of 30. Taylor's quite a story. Came back from a three-game suspension to put himself squarely in the middle of the tailback position. Watch the block by the fullback, Terry Jackson, on the edge right there. Creates the opening. No arm tackles. Mark Roman misses the arm tackle, and it's up to Rayon Hill to chase him from behind. Taylor now with four carries for 41 yards. Taylor, the ball carrier again. The junior from Bell Glade, Florida, tripped up by Greg Hill after a short game, perhaps a yard. Second down and nine upcoming. I asked Steve Spurrier about what he was going to do with this embarrassment of riches at tailback. He's got three or four guys that have been averaging five to seven carries. He said, Mike, I need one guy to step up and separate. I want to get one guy, either Elijah Williams or Fred Taylor, 20 to 25 carries. And it looks like today it could be Taylor. Florida leads 21 to 6 from their own 38. Words are tossed hot. And a great job of hanging on to the football by Ike Hilliard. He took an immediate hit. But it's a gain of 12 and a first down out of the 50-yard line. Cedric Donaldson there just as the ball arrived. Top of the screen, inside plan again. Good hit by Donaldson. Look at the ability, though, of Hilliard to hold on to the football. That's why I like these wide receivers. They can run. They can get off bump and run coverage, and they hold on to the football once they're hit. Mentioned Ike's cousin, Dalton Hilliard. Ike's brother, Ivory, played defensive back at LSU. 91 through 94, and they talk on the phone just about every day. Werfel, short drop, looking near side. Anthony has it inside the 25, and taken out of bounds at the 20 by Denard Walker. And the Gators are making it look easy. That's a 30-yard game. That's just pitch and catch. Everybody took that play off except for the one wide receiver that he's going to hit. One, two, three, throw it on time like Warple always does. Now watch the catch by Anthony right over the shoulder. You know, Denard Walker has been beat several times today, but the coverage has not been horrible. Very efficient once again today is Danny Werfel, who already is the NCAA all-time leader in career passing efficiency. Bettering the mark of Ty Detmer. Get the big start for Philadelphia this week. Gaping hole for Fred Taylor. And he's down near the 10-yard line. Mike, uh, Mark Roman, the free safety, forced to make the tackle. You get that defensive line in a pass rush mode, and then all of a sudden the quick hitter off the right side. Wide open for Fred Taylor. Taylor led Florida in rushing as a true freshman in 1994, had nearly 900 yards rushing, but then had an injury-marred season last year, injured his knee in Game 7 against Georgia, and missed the rest of the year. So he's battling back for playing time, as Mike mentioned a moment ago. And they're sneaking number 22, Jackson is fullback. He's usually a tailback. Taylor, that hole closed quickly, but it's good for a first down. And second and a yard. He got inside the 10 and down to about the seven yard line where Pat Rogers, Charles Smith combined to make the tackle. This drive for Steve Spurrier's First meter down. started on the Florida seven yard line and in just six plays they've gone to the LSU seven yard line. Any drive that lasts over two minutes is an anomaly in this offense. These guys get it up and down the field in the end zone and they go. First and goal. Florida leads 21 to 6 in the second quarter. Still eight and a half minutes left in the quarter. Oh, look at that. And it off to Jacquez Green, and it's an easy touchdown. Great play call and great execution by the Gators. And they open up a 27 to 6 lead. And I saw them practice that two weeks ago against Kentucky, and then this week in practice, cross motion handoff to the guy in motion.
motion right behind the quarterback. Jacquez Green can just jog into the end zone. from Pensacola, boots it through, and the Gators are pulling away, now leading by 22 in the swamp. LSU came to the swamp on a roll, riding a seven-game winning streak dating back to last year, but that streak is in serious jeopardy midway through the second quarter, the Tigers trailing by 22. It'll be Matt Teague to kick it off. He's a senior from Keystone Heights, Florida. Only two minutes and 42 seconds for the Gators to travel to 93 yards. For the last two touchdown drives, Werfel at the nine, five for five for 99 yards. And yet another touchback as a result of a kickoff by Matt Teague. How often do you see a guy come across the field like this and nobody pays any attention to him, but Florida's going to snap the ball right about this point and also keep your eye on the block here when the only guy on the edge with a chance to make a play. They're going to hand the ball off to Jack Wes Green right now and his buddy Ike Hilliard does just enough there to knock the linebacker off and let Jack Wes jog in the end. Second rushing touchdown of his career for the wide receiver, Josh Plays Green, a sophomore from Fort Valley, Georgia. The handoff goes to Kevin Fox. A nifty move. And that's a very hard earn, seven or eight yards for Fox. Tackled by Shea Showers. Credit Kevin with a gain of eight. That's the first time today we've seen the true natural ability of Kevin Falk. Watch how he slides in the hole. It's a cut, he's a cutback runner. He slides right there. Wow, make Lawrence Wright, who's an All-American strong safety, miss a tackle in the hole. First chance we got to see Falk really run like he can. Only 20 yards rushing as a team today for the Tigers. I mentioned earlier they average 280 per game for the year. Second and two. Oh, there's some more than in the handoff. Drop by Falk. Calling it Picked down. up by Willie Rogers. But they'll blow it dead. Turnovers will kill you against this team. On the last possession, Herb Tyler threw one he shouldn't have. And on this possession, we get a bad handoff. On the lead play, it never gets to Falk's bread basket. He, it's delivered on his hip. Willie Rogers picked it up. And they ruled that his knee was down. down he recovered the fumble. That was a very close call. Rogers would have scored. But it's the second turnover, an interception, and now a fumble lost by LSU. And the Gators are inside the 25-yard line of LSU. Oh, Rogers, a backup Rogers. defensive end, a junior from Miami. And it's Werfel ready to pounce on the mistake. the fullback. Elijah Williams the tailback. Werfel wants it all quickly and has it. Touchdown for Ike Hilliard. I think these LSU defensive backs are shell-shocked. This is decent coverage by Denard Walker. Doesn't get a bump, but he's running very well with them. But watch for the ball delivered again, right on the fingertip of Ike Hilliard. Danny Warfel is so accurate with such a great touch, he will definitely get a shot at the next level. He's a player. Edmiston, five for five in extra points today. Ike Hilliard against many of his friends from his native Louisiana with the touchdown 25 yards from Werfel. Now look what happens. Danny sees right here. He's got bump and run coverage. He's worried about the safety, so it'll be an outside release. One, two, three steps. Let it go before there's that even any separation. The touch, the accuracy. It's like playing flag football in the backyard, Sean. You got somebody that's pretty good. You just keep going for him. Gators average.
averaging just under 52 points per game coming in second nationally behind only the Ohio State Buckeyes the team ranked right behind them in this week's polls and it doesn't appear that the Gators will have to worry about the Buckeyes passing them in the polls this week. Well, so far it's about as, as an explosive performance against a pretty good team as I've seen in a long time. Warfel has been on target with every single one of his passes with the exception of one deep out cut early in the game. After the fumble, just one play, 25 yards, it took six seconds. Warfel six for six this quarter. 11 of 18 for the game for 215 yards and two touchdowns passing by Danny. Kevin Falk from the goal line. Paused for a moment, decided to bring it out, and he's taken down from behind at the 15-yard line. Tony George, a reserve defensive back and a special team standout, ran down Falk from behind. Two touchdown passes, as we mentioned, for Danny Werfel today, giving him 91 for his career. That moves him into a tie for second all-time in college football history with David Klingler of Houston. Only Ty Detmer has more. He has 30 more than the duo of Werfel and Klingler. Kevin Paul, the long back behind Tyler. And he gets smothered behind the line of scrimmage. Keith Council, backup defensive tackle, first to put the hit on Falk. Coming up next, Florida State and Miami. Three universities here in the state of Florida, the top six, Florida number one, Florida State number three, Miami number six, and the Gators out to prove in this game that regardless of who wins our next game, they're still the best team in the state of Florida. Play action fake. Tyler had some running room, elected to throw. Play. And it's good for Gate out to the 21-yard line to Tyrone Frazier, reserve wide receiver. A gain of eight on the pass to Frazier, who's 22 years old, but a true freshman at LSU. He played three years of minor league baseball in the Kansas City Royals organization. Bootleg, plenty of time. This is where Tyler's is most effective. It's Tyrone Frazier. With that kind of name, Sean, it sounds like he ought to be working out in the gym in Philly somewhere, but he's a wide receiver for LSU. Struggled to hit in the Royals minor league system. Decided to abandon his baseball career. Did sign with LSU to play football out of high school. I wound up attending LSU about three years later than the Tiger coaches hoped he would. Timeout called by LSU. One remaining for Jerry Bernardo here in the first half. Half that can't end quickly enough as far as he's concerned with the Gators leading 35 to 6. 635 remaining in the second quarter. This is an SEC battle, and there's much debate around the country about which is the strongest conference nationally this season. If you base it on records against non-conference foes, the SEC gets the nod with nearly a 71% winning percentage, 17 and 7 against non-conference opponents. You know, the Big 12 prior to the season started, everybody was talking about the Big 12, but they've had their noses bloodied a little bit with Arizona State obviously taking on Nebraska, Colorado losing to Michigan. I think right now the SEC's got the number one, number seven, number eight, number 12, and number 18 teams in the country. Clearly the most dominant conference in the country, and the Big 10, They've got 2, 10, 14, and 15, so they're not far behind. Big third down upcoming here for LSU. Tigers at their own, 21. They only picked up four first downs here in the first half. One impressive 80-yard touchdown drive. They've been miserable offensively the rest of the afternoon. Third down and four. The flat caught by Fox makes the move to avoid right and has the first down out of the 29 yard line. Lawrence Wright had a chance to make the play short of a first down, but that's a tough task when you're trying to stop a nifty runner by Falk and like Falk in the open field. Yeah, that's the whole 
point for that play is to try and get your talented tailback on the corner, one-on-one. -on -one. Now, Lawrence Wright, all SEC, preseason All-America. Watch the shake. There's the bake. Once again, see a Shea Showers. That's just great running ability. You can't teach that. He just has it. Caught the distant cousin of Marshall Falk when he first went to LSU. He told the Sports Nation folks they were not related at all, but his family members informed him that Marshall is, in fact, a distant cousin. James Bake made the tackle on Kevin Falk, sophomore from Rank Row, Louisiana. Karen Crow, Louisiana. James Bate made the stop. Falk last week rushed for 114 against Vanderbilt and set the school record with 246 yards in the opener against Houston. That was a dramatic come from behind win. They trailed 34-14 in the fourth quarter, 135-34 against the much improved University of Houston Cougars. Falk only seven yards rushing today on seven carries. Tyler throws into traffic. No chance for that to be completed to Tyrone Frazier. It'll be third down and nine. LSU has turned it around under Jerry DiNardo. He inherited a program that had had six consecutive losing seasons. Those years in the early 90s under Curly Hallman. The last year, we mentioned the winning record and bowl victory in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport over Michigan State. This year, 4-0 coming in, but the seven-game winning streak dating back to last year is in serious jeopardy today. Yeah, their progression has been really interesting. They've included Marshall Falk. They have a winning season, a bowl win, but trying to step it up on the road against number one is a little different. Third down and long, and Tyler is sacked. The safety, Lawrence Wright, got him the fourth sack of the afternoon for the Gators. That one goes back to the 25, and LSU will be forced to punt. Told you early on, Herb Tyler, not a pocket passer. Put them in third and long situation, top right of your screen. Lawrence Wright runs over a very poor block of Kevin Falk and makes the tackle. Let's face it, Kevin's not there because he was a good blocker. Mm -hmm. Chad Kessler. Leading punter in the SEC last year with a 44-yard average. Isn't doing quite as well this season. We called two weeks ago here on CBS. John Clay's Green returned two punts for touchdowns against Kentucky. That Kessler punt down to the 42-yard line of Florida. 33 yards on the punt. It was down by Joe Wesley, a reserve linebacker. So the Gators already leading 35-6. Go back on the attack with four and a half minutes left in the first half. Only one punt <laughs> and touchdowns at the end of every other possession here in the first half and for the Florida. The amazing thing is they all average between about a minute and a half and 210. That's how quickly they strike. The longest was 242, and that was a 93-yard drive. The shortest, of course, was six-second one play. Touchdown after the fumble. Mike Sutton made the tackle on Elijah Williams. Sutton, a junior from New Orleans. Limited playing time the last two years, but has become a starter this season with the dismissal of Kenny Mixon from the team. That was prior to last week's game. Mixon, an excellent player, going off the team for disciplinary reasons. The pass complete to Ike Hilliard. He's already over 100 yards receiving here in the first half. That's a gain of 11 to the 45 of the Tigers. Seven catches now for Hilliard, 137 yards and a touchdown. Wow. They spread you horizontally by alignment and then vertically by pattern. And there it is, just a little curl route. He runs Denard Walker off. And Denard Walker's a good cover guy, but he's just been exposed today by the talent of these wide receivers. Uh, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator for LSU, told us Walker is their best cover guy. Breaking tackles, Elijah Williams. He will score. Forty-five yards. The touchdown run by Elijah Williams. 
hole, number 21. Watch him blitz. That's Rayon Hill, and he misses the wide open tackle in the hole. You got to make that play because it's man to man coverage. And now the wide receivers are blocking down the field just enough to get Williams into the open field. Third rushing touchdown of the season for the junior from Milton, Florida, Elijah Williams. Edmiston adds the extra point. And it's 42 to 6. That drive only three plays, a minute and two seconds to go 58 yards. There's one guy unaccounted for in this blocking scheme. He's right here. That's the nickelback, number 21, Rayon Hill. They're going to come off tackle. Watch the miss. Right in the hole. Right there. You got a chance to make a tackle for no gain, and instead it's 45 yards and six points. That's how critical one on one tackling is. You know, it's only the second quarter. This LSU defense has to be very tired. They've spent a great deal of time chasing the Florida offense all over the field. First four games this season, that LSU defense had only given up 23 points in the first half combined. They've surrendered 42 today, and there's still 327 left in the half. The average time of the Florida scoring drives, the sixth touchdown drive, one minute, 34 seconds. <laughs> oh boy, the average distance is probably about 60 or 70 yards in a minute and a half. Boy, the tone for the game along those lines set by the opening kickoff. Richie kicked it out of bounds. Florida had great field position at the 35. They've been working from Great field position all day. And moving with ease up and down the field against a very good LSU team. Kevin Falk drives the middle, bounces off the pile, and worked very hard to get just across the 20-yard line. Well, this will not rank as a memorable moment in LSU Tiger history, but this will. 1959, LSU number one heading into the ballgame with Ole Miss, ranked number three. And LSU won the game 7-3 in Baton Rouge when Heisman Trophy winner Billy Cannon scored the only touchdown of the game, 89 yards, on an outstanding punt return. It was the 19th straight victory for LSU. They finished the 59 season with a 9-2 record. They lost Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl, but for 58, the Tigers were the national champions when they were 11-0 and, and beat Clemson in the Sugar Bowl. They've had happier days than this one, and they'll have others down the road. Right now, they're getting throttled by the number one team in the country. Falk danced for a yard out to the 22. Now, that run by Billy Cannon back in 1959 happened on Halloween night, and it's been famous, one of the most famous runs in the history of Southeastern Conference football, and they have a reenactment of that in different places in Baton Rouge every October 31st. Folks go out dressed as Billy Cannon. You know, you will notice there's not a number 20 on that team. It's the only jersey that's been retired in the history of LSU. LSU totally unable to rush the football today, and that doesn't change on that play. Falk into the line, hammered down by James Bates. LSU came in at 4-0, the dramatic come-from-behind win against Houston. Then the hard-fought victory at Auburn with a building burning down across the street. That was their one signature win of the mm -hmm. year so far. They're 4-0 with a great road win at Auburn. But when you have look an easy time with Kentucky, then it gets a little tougher. Yeah. Mississippi State, Alabama. Yeah, but realistically, I mean, there's one game left there. November 9th, Alabama. They ought to be able to handle everyone else. They could have a 10-1 type season if they go on from here, move ahead, and play Alabama tough. Well, the Tigers are taking a very long time in the huddle, and apparently they're going to use their final time out of the half. With third down and six upcoming, 147 remaining in the first half. Leonardo's LSU Tigers down 42 to six. We mentioned last week the 35 nothing win over Vanderbilt, and that was an interesting week for Jerry Leonardo, who was the coach at Vandy prior to coming to LSU. Apparently, did not leave on the best of terms from Nashville. There were some questions about his contractual right. situation. When he departed, traditionally LSU wears white jerseys at home. They need the permission of their opponents to do so. Vanderbilt wouldn't let them. They're the only team that has not allowed them to do that in quite some time. So they had white out Vanderbilt week in Baton Rouge. All of the fans wore white. The coaching staff wore white. 
everybody but the players wore gold right. for the first time since the 1960s and they did white out Vanderbilt shut them out for the first time since 1946 35 to nothing coming up at halftime Pat O'Brien Craig James and Danny Sheridan they'll get you caught up on all the scores and highlights on college football today plus a live interview with Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden from the site of the second game of our doubleheader and an in-depth look at Heisman candidate Troy Davis of Iowa State with Andrea Joyce. That's all coming up at the half. Neely Ballone back. He stayed in to pass protect and still Tyler got buried as he threw it away. Looking for Chris Beard, but he was under pressure. Particularly from the middle of the Florida defensive line. It was Willie Rogers who put the hit on him. Billy Rogers did a nice job. Cameron Davis. Everybody got up the field and wouldn't let Tyler on the corner. Over the minute 41 left in the half. Chad Kessler will punt for the fourth time. He's an outstanding student. Kessler 3.85 GPA at LSU. That's his best punt of the day. Now plays Green back to the 24. And he's tackled at the 33-yard line by Denard Walker. Good punt, 51 yards, and an eight-yard return. This day in college football history, 1963, number one versus number two, Oklahoma at Texas. Texas won the game 28-7 at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. They went on to finish the season 11-0, went over Navy in the Cotton Bowl. Texas finished ranked number one in national champions in the final AP poll. 1963. Is that a year also that Penn State went undefeated and lost, or was that later in the 60s? Undefeated back then it was uh, second in the poll. Yeah, the been quarterback in those days did uh, Texas and Duke Carlisle. And his nephew plays on the Florida team, Cooper Carlisle, a backup tackle. Riddell Anthony takes the toss from Werfel and goes out of bounds. Shy of the 39-yard line. Gain of about five on first down. Five catches now for Anthony for 75 yards. He's a junior from South Bay, Florida. His father, Clarence, was once the mayor of South Bay, Florida, a community of about 4,000 people. I think Riedel could be the mayor of a community of Gainesville with about 85,000 people here today. 42-6 Florida. Fred Taylor cuts back and has a first down. Out to the 45. Greg Hill made the tackle. Florida has two timeouts remaining. Minute 12 left in the half. First down, Florida. Florida's going to improve on that winning percentage, it would appear today. Fourth best in the 90 with 66 victories. 83% winning percentage. Only Florida State, Nebraska, and Miami better. Werfel pass intercepted. Greg Hill running it down the sideline. And Werfel in on the tackle as Hill goes out of bounds near the 20. Terry Jackson helped Werfel knock Hill out of bounds. 29 yards on the interception return by Greg Hill, the sophomore from Mansfield, Louisiana. Don't see Danny Werfel throwing the football up for grabs too often. He's out on the corner now on the run. Throws it across his body a little bit and stepping in with the pass that was poorly thrown and behind the intended receiver was the strong safety, Greg Hill. First interception of the year for Greg Hill. Play action fake by Tyler on first down. Throws on the run incomplete right through the hands of Chris Beard at the 10-yard line. Anthony Lott. And the coverage, but that was a pass that should have been caught by the sophomore from Shreveport. Yeah, you got to catch the football. Look at Steve Spurrier over there. He's winning 42 to 6. And look at him talking to Danny Warfel. Come on, Danny. You know better than that. Let's not get sloppy. Let's not get sloppy. And here's the pass that should have been caught. Chris Beard, lack of concentration. And that's one of the problems LSU's team's going to have this year. Young wide receivers because they lost Eddie Kennison and Shedrick Wilson, who are both in the NFL this year. Kennison, a first-round draft choice for St. Louis. Wilson now with the Houston Oilers as a free agent. Tyler avoids the pressure. Did a great job to stay on his feet, and he turned it into a game down to the 
18-yard line, Ed Chester made the tackle. LSU out of timeouts, and the clock is running down to 30 seconds. Right. Left in the half. Look, great athletic ability by the quarterback there, but he's not real good at picking up the second and third receivers. Third down and eight, and he threw it into the turf, so it'll be fourth down. He just wanted to stop the clock without a timeout left in 18 seconds. I, yeah, but you've got it. You, I, I think Jerry DiNardo is a little upset with that. Third and eight, you can't bury the ball into the ground. You, you've got to have an ability to get up over the line, call a play, and try and get the first down. Tyler is still a developing quarterback, just a sophomore, still gaining experience. Next week, we'll see the Gators again against Auburn. Damian Craig developing pretty well as a quarterback for Auburn. That's from Florida Field right here next Saturday, beginning at 3.30 Eastern on CBS Sports. And delay of game now. So even after they stop the clock by throwing it into the ground they can't get organized quickly enough and instead of it being fourth down and seven it's going to be fourth and twelve and this is a fitting conclusion to the half for Jerry DiNardo. Yeah, you know what and it's growing pains with a young quarterback he's got to learn to be in this situation learn how to manage the clock Jerry DiNardo is very frustrated right now if it, and you can't blame him but Tyler will get better at this Officially fourth down and 13. That's a 22. 42 6. Florida has the lead with 18 seconds left in the first half. Tyler's going to throw to the end zone in a double coverage. No chance. David LaFleur was double covered in the end zone. And LSU turns it over on down. LaFleur probably the most highly rated tight end in the country. He's 6'7", 280 pounds. Quick enough to stretch you vertically, runs about a 4'7", 40, big enough obviously to block. He's going to be a guy you see a lot of Sundays in the next few years. Should be a top 10 type pick in the next draft. One scouting combine at the moment has him rated as the best prospect in the NFL draft at any position. Take a knee. They had plenty of time to score with 10 seconds left in the half by their standards. That's all kinds of time, but they decided to take a knee and end the first half with the score Florida 42 and LSU 6. Pat O'Brien, Craig James, and Danny Sheridan will be along with college football today right after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of college football is sponsored by Selsun Blue, doctors recommended number one for dandruff. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Head to head against LSU, Florida has won the last eight meetings, and the Gators on their way, it appears to make it nine straight over the Tigers as they lead at halftime 42 to 6. Matt Teague will kick off for Florida to begin the second half. Bringing to Kevin Falk and Rondell Mealy. It'll be Falk from the goal line. Flag down. Falk out of bounds at the 25, chased out by Mike Harris. Flag down to the 29 yard line. Not a good way to start the half. Decent kickoff return to the 26, and they're going to take it back. For the hold. holding penalty. After Sizemore, the referee. Dominant performance on offense in the first half by Florida. 22 first downs and 378 yards of total offense without turning the ball over. And I guess their offense is the best example. The well, time of I possession mean, means very little. Look right here. Two converts to 14, and then look down here. Time of possession in this type of ball game where you go up and down the field so quickly like Florida means absolutely nothing. Werfel passed for 232 yards in the first half after the holding penalty has stepped off. The Tigers begin at their own 15. And on the first play, they give it to Falk. And he has some running room. Out of bounds at 
the 27 with a first down for LSU. A 12-yard gain for Kevin Falk. He was pushed out by Tim Bochamp. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Lawrence Wright, the All-SEC strong safety, has seen right. enough of Falk already. Watch him in the hole. There goes again. Little stutter step, and he's going to beat him to the corner. That's a pretty good football player that doesn't even get a mid on him. That's how quick this kid is in the hole. Seats right and gets to the sideline. Good pickup. And made himself known on the national scene when he rushed for 234 yards in their Independence Bowl victory last year over Michigan State. That time, nothing there for Falk as he ran into Reggie McGrew, the redshirt freshman from Mayo, Florida. He played for his father in high school. His dad, Taylor, was his high school coach at Lafayette County High School in Mayo. That's also the hometown of former Gator quarterback Kerwin Bell. When Reggie was growing up, he was the water boy for his dad's high school team. I asked defensive coordinator Bob Stoops, what was the one word that comes to mind when you look at Reggie McGrew? And he said, strong. Just can't block him in the run one-on-one. -on -one. Reggie 6'2", 281 pounds as a redshirt freshman. Second and 10. Tyler throws to a wide open tight end. David LaFleur, his knee was down as he made the catch. So instead of a first down with the run after the catch, it's shy of a first down, but a gain of eight out to the 35-yard line. First catch of the day for the All-American candidate tight end, David LaFleur. And James Bates, number 44, overran the play. His zone drop went too far there. It's the knee down. Good call by the referee crew. Bates, we mentioned his dad coached here at Florida. First defensive coordinator for Steve Spurrier when he came to Florida in 1990. That's not a position with a lot of longevity well, around here. Well, Jim Bates, the dad, has moved on to the NFL as the defensive coordinator for the Falcons and is now the linebacker coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Tyler under pressure and sack back at the 30-yard line. Fifth sack of the day for the Gators. This one belongs to Cameron Davis. That's a great effort play. Davis was blocked. Quarterback Herb Tyler had to pull the ball down, and you're going to see from the top right of your screen, Cameron Davis is blocked. Tyler steps into the flat, but he keeps hustling. Keeps hustling and gets the sack. Florida leads 42-6. to six. First possession of the third quarter for LSU results in a Chad Kessler punt. Fair catch signal given by Jacquez Green. Forty-one yard punt without a return. And the Gators go on offense for the first time in the second half after this. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the University of Florida. Welcome back to Ben Hill Gribben Stadium, Florida Field, affectionately known as the Swamp here in Gainesville on the University of Florida campus. Gators on offense for the first time in the second half, leading 42-6. Williams and a big gainer close to another first down out at the 40 it appears to be a first down and a gain of 10 the tackle made by Pat Rogers Booger McFarland almost makes a play here but he misses him in the hole watch the cut in the hole by Williams right there the cut back across the grain Booger just misses him another good cut cut back before Rogers makes the tackle Williams trying to get outside, and he could not. Nice tackle by Greg Hill. Williams able to lunge ahead to the 43-yard line before Hill tripped him up. Hill's the brother of former Tiger receiver Chris Hill. He also has a brother who is the backup quarterback on this year's team, Melvin Hill. Greg wears his brother's jersey numbers on his towel for each Tiger game. Related to all the hills except for Rayon Hill mm -hmm. and Nickelback. Wayne Mobley, the fullback, in front of Elijah Williams. And Williams goes through another gaping hole. Ball squirted out, but he was down at the 46 of LSU. Again, tackled by Greg Hill. That's good for 11 yards. And another Florida first down. Now, when Florida gets in the I formation, it's runner play action. Watch the block, the lead block right there on linebacker Pat Rogers. That creates the big seam. 
and Williams up the middle. That's something that Ferrier really yeah, wants his team yeah. to do is develop some toughness and be able to run the football when they need to late in the season. And with a big lead, good opportunity to work on the run game this afternoon. Against this tired LSU defense. And this time, after the fake similar play to the touchdown scored by Jacquez Green, Allen Stansbury right there to take down Williams. That's a loss of two for Elijah Williams on the tackle by Stansbury, the defensive team captain for LSU, a senior from Baton Rouge and a candidate for the Butkus Award as the nation's best middle linebacker. Allen's in his third year as a starter. Had six sacks last year, the most ever by an inside linebacker at LSU. No sacks this season. Well, they moved him outside because he was pretty quick. Less of an opportunity in their team to play the sack. Plays on the strong side this year. Williams skips to the right to find the hole and goes down at the 43-yard line of LSU. Tackled by Pat Rogers. Williams approaching 100 yards for the day. He has 10 carries. 93 yards. Start of the day as the second leading rusher for Florida. Only one yard less for the season than Terry Jackson. They've only had one 100-yard rushing game this season by a bag. That was Eugene McCaslin, the redshirt freshman in the Georgia first game of the year against Georgia Southern. Went for 116 yards. Anthony hit in front of the LSU sideline at the 42-yard line by Cedric Donaldson. And the Gators will punt words <laughs> rarely spoken. <laughs> If there is one guy on this team who's never tired, it's the punter, Robbie Stevenson. He's got a grand total of 14 punts in five games. One punt today for 40 yards for Stevenson. Sophomore from Bradenton, punting it to Kevin Falk. Too much on that one. Into the end zone on the fly. A 41-yard punt, but only a net of 21. And the Tigers will begin for the second time this half at the 20-yard line. 42-6 Florida, nearly midway through the third quarter. Sean McDonough, Mike Mayock back in Gainesville. Florida leads 42-6. LSU obviously is not going to win this game, Mike. What do they try to take from the second half? Well, I think Jerry DiNardo probably had some stern words at halftime about forget the whole half. You get a completion to the floor down the field. And he goes out to the 41-yard line, a gain of 21. And let's check in with Pat O'Brien. All right, Sean, thanks. Homecoming today also in Lincoln. And Nebraska's won 27 straight homecoming games to take a 7-0 lead over Baylor. Damon Benning scores on a one-yard plunge. Mid-first quarter, Benning has 57 yards rushing. Back to Sean. Thank you very much, Pat. We were trying to talk about Denardo halftime. What, are the, what can they take out of this game? You've got to come back, play as hard as you can in the second half, forget about what the score is, and come out of this thing understanding you've still got a good season ahead of you. Tyler threw, complete to Tyrone Frazier for a gain of eight. He was tackled by Anthon Lott. That is short of a first down out at the 49-yard line of LSU. A rare good play on first down this afternoon for LSU. They'll have second down and two. And if you're Steve Spurrier, look at the numbers right there. 400 yards were barely into the second half. But if you're Steve Spurrier, you don't want guys to get sloppy right now. You've got another half of football to play. You want to get your starters a workout and get ready for Auburn next week. Ricky Savoie, the F-back, went in motion and fought fighting for first down yardage and did not appear to get there. Johnny Rutledge able to drive him back. It'll be third down and short. Welcome home to America's Night of Television on CBS tonight. Don't miss all new episodes of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, Early Edition, and Walker, Texas Ranger. Early Edition. Is that that one where the guy knows in advance what's going to happen? the newspaper and, uh, a day early. Not bad. You and I might even hit it, hit, hit something right that way. Third down, a yard to go for a first down. And Hawk carried and appeared to pick it up. But just by a little bit. 
Tim Beauchamp made the tackle and LSU in crowded backfield with Booger in the backfield. Anthony McFarland, who lined up some last year in short yarded situations on offense, was in the backfield again. Booger caught a touchdown pass last year from the fullback position a year ago against Florida. A little play action, and you sneak Booger into the flat. Tough to sneak him anywhere at 290 pounds. Blitz. Tyler is sacked by Lawrence Wright, who came on a safety blitz. Six sacks today for the Florida Gators. They anticipated play action. They came off both sides. Lawrence Wright and Mike Peterson coming off the edge both ways. And after Herb Tyler finishes the fake, he's got guys in his face to the left, to the right, tuck it down, and another sack. Wright's a veteran. Today is 30th career start. Last year he was first team All SEC and third team All American as selected by the Football News. And he'll be a candidate for those awards again this year. Florida leads 42 to six. Under six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Tyler has a man down the middle, and had Frazier been able to catch it in stride, he would have run for a while, but he had to make a tumbling catch at the 41, and as a result, came up short of a first down. It's a gain of 10, and they need about two more, two and a half for a first down. Fred Weary got caught up. You don't see that too often with the Florida defensive backs, which you really, you look at this defense, three of the four starters in the secondary for Florida are seniors. It's very, very talented and really experienced. They don't often get beat like that on little pick play. Tyler four for four this quarter for 47 yards passing. They blitz again, he's in trouble. Got away from one man, but not the next. He was able to shed Johnny Rutledge, but couldn't get away from Cameron Davis. And it's a loss of six. They went right back to the same play that worked before, which was the pick play up top. But this time, Fred Weary fought his way through it. Watch Tyler. He thinks he's going to have the slant underneath. Doesn't. He's got to pull it down. Here comes Rutledge. And then clean it up, Cameron Davis. And they're going to punt. Thought they might on fourth and ten go for it at the floor of the 49, down by 36 points in the third quarter. Kessler, end over end punt, handled by Jacquez Green. And a flashing run back to the 25, tackled by Charles Smith. 41 yard punt, 16 yard return, 419 remaining in the third quarter. In Miami, here in Gainesville, the number one team in the nation, Florida, has dominated number 12 LSU. It's 42 to 6 in the third quarter. Fred Taylor on first down. Good gain out to the 32. They're working on David LaFleur, even with his team down by 36. LaFleur was still running down, covering the punt, and the All-American candidate at tight end might have injured himself on punt coverage. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Gus Johnson will give us an update, but it looks like a shoulder or a neck. But the change of personnel on some of those teams, given the situation, you don't want to risk losing. Now, they want to win the like second half. Florida. They're going to come out and try and win the second half. I'm sure that's what Bernardo said at half. Taylor. Wrapped up immediately by Chuck Wiley. And let's check in with Gus Johnson. All right, Sean, uh, David LaFleur on the punt return suffered a burner in his left shoulder, and right now the trainers on the bench have him moving his arm up and down, but they say that he's okay and he should go back into the ballgame. He looks a little pain to me, doesn't mm -hmm. he? I'm not sure how much of a beating you want your, your All-American tight end to take with the score 42 to 6 at this point. Well, they're trying to win the second no, no, half, no, as but, you suggest. Uh, I know. Let him take but, a beating. Yeah, I'd, I'd let... Expression is a better point of balance sometimes. Play action fake by Werfel, and it's dumped off to Terry Jackson. And he's driven back, and a flag flies in, perhaps for a face mask at the 39-yard line. Denard Walker stopped it after a gain of seven. Gain good for a first down, and the referee just now aware of the flag. Clock stopped with 2.49 left in the third quarter. 42 to 6 Florida.
the third face mask penalty called against LSU today. Yeah, how often do you see that? We had two early in the first period. Here comes the third. A little touch pass again. Out to Jackson. Jackson fighting for yards at the end. Unintentional. And as a result, a five-yard penalty. And off. Fred Taylor. First down Florida to the LSU 41-yard line. Rayon Hill made the tackle. Let's check in again in New York. Pat O'Brien with an update. All right, Sean. Iowa State has climbed back. Let's go back to you, Sean. It's 17-14 now. Iowa State leads Texas A&M. Wow. Thank you very much, Pat. Tough year for the Aggies, huh? Very tough. Can't buy a win. How come, Te and, you know, another thing, how come Texas is still in the top 25? Three and two, no quality wins. I mean, that's why the polls shouldn't even start until October, as far as I understand. Verbal's in on 10 of his last 11 since the start of the second quarter. Of course, all 11 were caught by somebody. The other one was an interception by Greg Hill of LSU. And now they're just running through the LSU defense. That was Taylor again. Following up a game of 15 with another carry good for 12. A junior from Belglade, Florida. Watch the interior well. line here. Mitchell, Kalick, and Yarbrough. That's, if there's any concern about the Florida people right now, it's the location of their offensive line. Who's playing what position? They only scored 14 points in the first half last week against Arkansas, but they certainly have done a great job today. Balanced Florida attack. Taylor on the run. And another flag thrown at the end of the play. Could it be yet another face mask? Greg Hill. Greg Hill's been tackling up high today. He lost contain initially and then compounded the problem by going high. Well, this time yep. it's an illegal block against the Gators. Minute 35 left in the third quarter. Florida leads 42 to 6. We have an illegal block in the back by the offensive team. The 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. Talk about the balance today. We think of the fun and gun offense primarily as a passing offense, but coming into today's game, Florida had rushed the ball on 172 plays this season and it passed 180 so only 80 more or eight rather more passes than rushes and when you talk to the other coaches defensive coordinators they mention balance right away nobody else thinks that way but florida can run the football they learned last year against nebraska you have to toss to taylor and he's in trouble and swarmed under by the lsu defense back at the 39 greg hill again up near the line of scrimmage from his safety spot Mike Sutton also in on the play. Once again, here's Pat O'Brien. All right, Sean, let's talk about that game. Iowa State trailed 17 to nothing against Texas A&M. They now trail by three, 17-14, as Troy Davis scored on a two-yard run. Here it is. He has 81 yards on the day, just too shy of the 1,000 for the season. I say that's a gimme. Let's go back to Sean. <laughs> yeah, he'll have a 1,000 and then some. A lot of then some before the season is over. He's averaging 229 a game, so obviously A&M playing him pretty tough. Again, long at the LSU 39, the Gators lead 42 to 6. Looked like Werfel threw it away under pressure. Late flag thrown near the line of scrimmage. Pass intended for Fred Taylor. Werfel under pressure for one of the very few times today, and it's a holding penalty against the Florida Gators. They've only been penalized twice in this game today, and the second penalty was just seconds ago on the illegal block. I'll tell you one thing. You don't. When Danny Warfel throws the football, it doesn't hit the ground too often. It's not incomplete too often. At one point, we had what 10 or 11 consecutive passes. Florida caught them all, and except for one that was caught by LSU. Of holding on the offense, the 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. The Gators are in reverse at the moment. <laughs> Back to the 49 of LSU. Florida's won 18 straight regular season games. Over the last 23 regular season games, they're 22-0-1. Haven't lost in the regular season since 1994, mid-season, 36-33, the loss to Auburn. And that streak will remain intact this afternoon. Second down and 30 now. And they hand it off to Ike Hillier. And Denard Walker was able to trip him up. 
At the 36, a gain of 13 for Hilliard. Great cut in the hole. You can tell why they talk about the rack with Hilliard. Run after catch. Little reverse action all off the, here goes the fake to the fullback. Give it on the reverse to Hilliard. Makes a little shake and bake in the hole. Another one. Run after catch. One of the great characteristics of a wide receiver. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Florida 42 and LSU 6 will return to Florida Field after this message and a word from your local station. No scoring in the third quarter as Florida went primarily with the running attack ahead 42 to 6. And the celebration has already begun here in Gainesville in anticipation of victory. Third down and 17 now. Gators at the LSU 36. Work will hit as he threw it and it is caught. And then dropped by Anthony, but picked up by Jackson. And a first down for Florida at the eight-yard line. Adele Anthony coughed it up at about the 11 or 12. But Terry Jackson hustling all the way downfield on the play in the right spot, and he advanced it a couple of yards. Got to love it when your fullback is 17 yards downfield picking up a fumble. Good blocks on Wiley up front on Booger. They keep him out. Ball's delivered once again right on the numbers to Anthony. Gets good hit. Ball is stripped. And there it is. Jackson with the recovery. Heads up play by Terry Jackson. Leon Hill took a hit from his own man, Troy Twilley, and off the field, apparently in pain. Word ball throw. Touchdown! Great throw. Great catch by Hilliard. The amount of room needed to thread that needle was barely at the length of a football. And Steve Spurt, he's a purist when it comes to his pass attack. He is an absolute purist. He loves when something he draws up on the chalkboard turns into reality on the field. Out of Teague's hold. It's good. Mike Hillier, the touchdown reception. First score of the second half. Florida continues its annihilation of LSU 49 to 6 early in the fourth quarter. Teague to kick off at the eight yard touchdown pass. Danny Werfel to Mike Hillier. Teague might be tired. That's a short kickoff and a live ball taken on a hop by Rondell Mealy. And he is tripped up by Teague at the 30-yard line, an 18-yard return by Mealy. Now, I said at the top of the show that he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks I've ever seen. Watch the slant in between coverage here and the free safety. And also, you've got a free sa a strong safety coming off the corner backside. Watch how much room he has to complete this pass. Mm -hmm. Over top of the corner, in front of the free safety, Sean, it, it's just the most accurate college quarterback I've ever seen. Eight accurate tosses to Hillier today for 145 yards and two touchdowns. Tyler comes out throwing, and it's complete. Tyrone Frazier close to a first down at the 40-yard line. Here's Pat O'Brien. All right, Nebraska fans wouldn't want any other way. Looking impressive at home against Baylor. Now up 14-0 after a six-yard touchdown run by D'Angelo Evans. By the way, Sean Troy Davis got his two over 1,000. Back to you. The throw to Frazier was good for a first down. First and 10 LSU at its own 41-yard line. And one impressive touchdown drive today, and that's been it on offense for the Tigers. Big hole for Mealy. And Rondell is down to the 50-yard line, close to another first down. Javon Kurse made the tackle. He's shy of a first down by about a half yard. Nine yards on the game by Rondell Mealy. Now, Troy Davis becomes the second back this year to go over 1,000 yards because Byron Hansford had an extra game coming into this weekend. He's already got over 1,100 yards, averaging almost eight yards a carry. Sean, not a lot of people talking about him, but outside of Warfel, I like Hansford high some trophy-wise. Warfel certainly.
Mealy helping his cause today. Mealy cross midfield for a first down. As a team now for LSU in today's game, 29 carries for a total of 23 yards rushing. The team averaging 280 yards per game rushing coming in. Wow. Not a lot of people talk about this Florida defense. They're young and quick up front. They're experienced with man coverage in the back. Tough, tough group to play against. And well coordinated by Bob Stoops. Tyler was hit, and his pass fell incomplete. Javon Kirst put a hit on him, and now action after the whistle. Nicky Savoy tangled up with Willie Rogers. flags as you might expect and both players go to the sidelines they're going to meet right in the middle here Javon Kurth coming one way Demetric Jackson from the top it's a big hit Tyler was lucky to get the football away as neither of them were even touched coming off the corner backside front side sandwich we have a double foul personal foul on offense both players were ejected. Whoa. This, this is a third down. Ejected. Rogers, Savoy, and Willie Rogers. Wow. Both done for the day. Rogers, I can explain that to his wife, Heidi. He's married. And has a 16 month old daughter also named Heidi. Whoa. Stoops, we were talking a moment ago about Stoops and what a great job he has done. Came here after seven years at Kansas State. He had the top defense in the nation last year at K-State. And Coach Spurrier brought him in this year to be the defensive coordinator du jour here in Florida. 49 to 6. Stoops is a 36-year-old defensive coordinator who's headed for huge things in the college coaching team. One of the most highly respected, pressure, aggressive defense type of guy. Well, it was an incomplete pass. You can see that's what he was gesturing. Right. The officials they forgot. Want to, they apparently. want to make sure the down is counted. It was an incomplete pass. And the ball goes back and be second and ten. Right. Which is the correct call, and Jerry Donardo knows that. On the near sideline, Brian Schottenheimer, the backup quarterback, is warming up for Florida. He is the son of... Kansas City Chiefs head coach Marty Schottenheimer. You know, the guy he's throwing it to in his catch, it's Schottenheimer catching with the heir apparent to Danny Warfel. That's number 12, Doug Johnson. He's a true freshman from the Gainesville area. And folks, that's the guy right there that will run the fun and gun down the road. Tyler, deep drop and a deep pass. Looking for Frazier, and he catch. has it. Good catch. Now, he might have pushed off to get some separation, but he got the separation necessary to make the catch. And it's a 34-yard gain to the 14-yard line. Definitely looked like Frazier might have given the DB a shove to get some space. Well, he was running neck and neck and all of a sudden had a two or three-yard separation. He might have used the hand, but he got away with it either way. It's an excellent play by Tyrone Frazier. <laughs> Frazier having his best day. Stoops didn't like it. He saw what... We saw the push off. Frazier, three catches for the year coming in. It's five today. Option toss. Mealy running room inside the five and out of bounds. Knocked out by a backup safety, Mike Mealy Harris. Five, 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 five. The gain of 11. First and goal, LSU at the three. They trail 49 to six with 12 46 remaining. Op option play in the red zone. Look at Bob Stoops. He does not want them in the end zone right here. First team, second team, he doesn't care. He had a very good situation at Kansas State. Enjoyed working with Bill Snyder a great deal. As a matter of fact, he told us yesterday he and his wife had purchased the house two weeks before he got the call from Coach Spurrier. He was ready to settle in Manhattan, Kansas for a while. As much as he can in the coaching business. Tyler in trouble. Tyler down back at the nine-yard line. And it was number nine, Anthony Lott who completed the seventh sack of the day for Bob Stoops' defense. You know, you go in Bob Stoops' office, you're not even sure if he, how long he's going to stay here. There's not a picture on the whole wall in Bob Stoops' office. Play action. 
Now here's where you got to get off the corner. Anthony Lott does a great job of chasing him wide, and now the guys can chase Javon Curse and everybody else. Peterson from an inside-out angle and get to him. Now earlier in the day, Tyler's pants were ripped. Back of his jersey. Tough day. Crowd making deafening noise, and Tyler goes down in the arms of Curse. Back at the 12-yard line. Option defense is assignment football. Backup safety Mike Harris took away the pitch man, and when you take away the pitch man and you don't block the contain man, Javon Curse just comes underneath and kills him. Tyler's going to endure his first loss as the starting quarterback at LSU was 8-0 coming in. Obviously the starting quarterback for all seven victories during this winning streak. And he also played as the starter against North Texas in a win earlier last year. On third and goal, he goes over the middle, nearly intercepted. Diving attempt made by Demetric Jackson. He almost picked it off for the Gators. And Jerry Denardo told the field goal team to stay on the sideline. It appears he's going for the touchdown on fourth and goal from the 11. Flint with man coverage on the outside, free safety in the middle. You can see right there Mike Harris hanging on it. Good coverage by Jackson. Mm. It becomes a two-on-one situation with the two safeties. Harris, Mike Harris knocked down Larry Foster before the ball arrived. Listen to this play. <laughs> They're not satisfied with 49 to 6. They don't want the Tigers to score again. LSU won the two on fourth down today. They go to the fade, and it's batted down. Fine defensive play by Tony George. Flag in the end zone. Larry Foster, the intended receiver. Certainly the end of the play looked clean. Perhaps there was contact before George batted it down. That'll be a first down if it's pass interference. That's automatic. We have interference on the defense. The ball will be placed on the two-yard line. Watch Tony George, number one. He's got his hands all over 22 Larry Foster. There's a lot of pushing and shoving, but at the end of the play, there's certainly no interference. If they get it at all, it's early on in the play when the ball's in the air. George, second cousin of last year's Heisman Trophy winner. Eddie George, running back from Ohio State, now with the Oilers. So he's a cousin of last year's winner, perhaps a teammate of this year's winner, Danny Werfel. Flag down, merely touchdown if the play stands. Flag thrown as the ball was snapped. And the LSU players indicating it's against Florida. Offside, Florida, I think, in the neutral zone. Offside, defense, penalty refused, touchdown. Rondell Mealy, the touchdown on a two-yard run. Second touchdown of the afternoon for LSU. Top sweep, key is the fullback block right there, Tyler. And then when you get one-on-one -on, -one on Rutledge, you've got to have enough momentum to knock him backwards, which Mealy did. Wade Ritchie's first extra point was blocked. This one is good. 10-58 remaining. It's now Florida 49 and LSU 13. Texas Ranger. We hope you'll be tuned in tonight on CBS. Richie's kickoff bounces out of bounds. That's just how the game started. On a kickoff out of bounds that gave Florida the ball at the 35-yard line. New quarterback now for the Gators. Brian Schottenheimer, the senior from Overland Park, Kansas, takes over. And those Gator fans enjoyed what they saw today from Danny Werfel. Certainly helped his Heisman cause. Werfel, 17 of 25 for three touchdowns today. 273 yards. You see the numbers on Schottenheimer. It was appeared in every game this season. They've been regularly so far ahead. The backup quarterbacks with a chance to get some playing time. Werfel, 17 of 25, 273, three touchdowns, one interception. Schottenheimer hands off to Williams. Danny Werfel wasn't very sharp to start the game. Started out in the first quarter, only five for 12 for 91 yards. 
but thereafter was 12 for 13 and the only ball that was not completed was the interception which technically was completed yes well the last 13 balls he threw did not touch the ground but remember we talked about the second quarter separation which is exactly what happened again LSU was making a game of it you get into the second quarter and that's where they separate very quickly for the Super Bowl play. Big interception thrown by Tyler, 21 to 6. LSU, a little bit of momentum established on offense for a home run ball, and it was picked off. Never in the game thereafter. We know the same barber, that Julia <laughs> fan. <laughs> and myself. Uh, a couple whiskers south of the nose, and that's Sean McDonough. <laughs> oh, now easy. I have a little more than him. <laughs> Not much more. <laughs> Williams. Threatening a 100-yard day now. Looks like they're trying to get him over 100. We have him for 12 carries, 99 yards for Elijah Williams. He'll probably be watching the next game, Florida State, Miami. His stepbrother, Greg Allen, former standout running back at Florida State. And that will definitely get him over 100 for the day. Elijah Williams, a junior from Milton, Florida, with just the second 100-yard rushing performance by a Gator this year. 13 carries, 111 yards officially for Elijah Williams. And they'll decline the penalty to get him his 100-yard gain. Good push up front. Coach Spurrier told us he really wanted somebody to step up and get some more carries, get them comfortable with carrying more than five or six times a game. Elijah Williams or Fred Taylor is going to be the guy that's got to get it done for the rest of the season. Williams out and might rest for much of the rest of the game. Practice up for his performance tomorrow, perhaps. He plays keyboard in the local church choir. Elijah Williams. That's Fred Taylor with the carry. Short gain to the 47 of LSU. Pickup of two. Now Taylor's up to 96 yards. The one challenge for Florida this season, the game at Tennessee. And, of course, they had the big lead, and Tennessee came back to make the score respectable but it was never really a tight game and here's the remaining Florida schedule nice thing for them is they had the two weeks today at LSU next week they have Auburn then they have an open week before going into the last four games of the season so the, the schedule really begins to look good for Steve Sherman Taylor over 100 and he goes over 100 Pat Rogers the tackle on Fred Taylor now 107 yards for Taylor on 16 carries after a gain of 11. <laughs> and he leaves. So the sideline is obviously very well in tune with the staff. <laughs> Last week, Steve Spurrier took some heat from the Arkansas people because he put Danny Werfel back in the game to get a couple of records, the all-time season touchdown record and a couple of other records. This week, he's decided to get the 100-yard games. Who can blame him? And now McCaslin in a tailback. Eugene McCaslin, the redshirt freshman number 32, had the only 100-yard rushing game for the Gators prior to today. Of course, they spread out the carries so much, it's difficult for an individual to pick up the 100 yards. Marquise Spears put the wrap on McCaslin. We talked about last week's game at Arkansas. After that Florida victory, Frank Broyles, longtime Arkansas coach, now the athletic director, said, Danny Werfel is the best quarterback I've ever seen, period. I've asked some people around the country, you know, he looks funny, he throws funny, he's, you know, I don't care if he's a good pro or not, he's a great college player, but can he play at the next level? And you hear people drop names like, well, Joe Montana was a third round pick that nobody thought looked very pretty in, in college. Uh, Bernie Kosar, some other people like that that don't have great arms, but understand the game. Nice pass by Schottenheimer. And down to the 14 yard line goes Taurus Ross. A backup tight end, his first catch of the day, just the second of the season for Ross, a junior from Dade City, Florida, a 23-yard game. But it does beg an interesting question, what happens if Danny Werfel gets hurt this year? This is the guy that's got to step it up. Play action, nice touch there, coverage is not horrible, good catch by Ross, but we asked Coach Spurrier, who comes in on the next snap if something goes down? Is it Doug Johnson or is it Schottenheim? Got memory said, I'm not really sure, but both of them have to step their games up to another level. He said Schottenheimer had not been throwing the ball well lately. He did throw that time. McCaslin inside the 10, inside the 5, and down just shy of the 4-yard line. Chuck Wiley, the starting left defensive tackle, still in there for LSU. And he made the stop. Under 7 minutes remaining. Florida on its way to 6-0. Oh. 
leading by 36. Wiley was second team all SEC last year. Only a junior. They think he's one of the best football players they've got, they've seen in the Southeastern Conference along the defensive line. Also the strongest player in the world. Doug Wiley's the cousin of former Super Bowl MVP quarterback Doug Williams. Caslin remains the lone back. Schottenheimer gave it to him. He is in trouble. Bounced off the hill and now has a lot of running room. Eugene McCaslin a touchdown. He was hit by Greg Hill. Well behind the line of scrimmage, but Hill couldn't wrap him up. Schottenheimer threw a block to help McCaslin. And Florida has posted 55 points with the extra point upcoming. Greg Hill has got to make the tackle in the backfield, six yards deep right there. All he did was hit him with a shoulder pad. You got to wrap up. Good block by the quarterback. And then McCaslin beats him into the corner of the end zone. Twice today, we've seen defensive backs with one-on-one -on -one tackles that could prevent touchdowns. Both times, the Gators break the tackle and go to the Edmiston, that's the extra point. And that kind of a day for the LSU defense, 56-13 Gators. Well, in that last touchdown run, backup quarterback Brian Schottenheimer from the right of your screen takes on the defensive tackle Chuck Wiley with his right shoulder. Key block, but Sean, you think his dad, Marty, will have anything to say about that? I tell him the block with his left shoulder from <laughs> now on if he wants to continue to be the number two quarterback. <laughs> Great block. Key play on the touchdown run by McCaslin to five yards. Rondell Mealy still back there running back the kickoffs. Down 56 to 13. Rondell ran it back to the 27 to 20 yard return. Well, we certainly hope for a more competitive game in the second half of our double header, and we expect a great matchup between Florida State and Miami. Would you care to make a bold prediction? Well, I think the key for Miami is how well Ryan Clement can play. His first start last year was against Florida State, where he was clearly overwhelmed. I think Thad Busby stepped it up last week, and if Busby continues to play as well as he did last week, Florida State's national championship contender. New quarterback Brian Sparacino into the ball game for LSU, and his first pass is complete to Nemesis Bates. Sparacino to Bates. First reception of the ball game for Bates. Sparacino's a junior from Denham Springs, Louisiana. Has appeared in a couple of games this year. Most of those stats you saw compiled against New Mexico State when he was 8 for 12. He went 0 for 2 last week late in the game against Vanderbilt. Brian's first year at LSU after two at Northwest Mississippi Junior College. He passed 4,900 yards and 45 touchdowns in two years. And it's Bates again into the secondary. Nemesis Bates down to the 22. Demetric Jackson made the tackle for Florida, a gain of 38, so that combination comes off the bench, Ferrisino and Bates, and quickly the Tigers are in scoring position. And when I asked the coaches what kind of quarterback Ferrisino was, they said a much better pocket passer, can throw the football, he puts it right on a rope there to Bates. Good pitch, good catch. And Bates can run once he has it, too. Nemesis is a true freshman. Only one reception for the year coming in. That was against New Mexico State. And St. Augustine High School in New Orleans. That's to the end zone and incomplete. Intended, it appeared, for LaFleur. And there were two receivers in the area. Yeah, there was an offensive bust there. Rodney Hudson or David LaFleur. One of them shouldn't have been there. LaFleur was running the seam. And then he broke it to the corner. Hudson was already there. You never put two guys in the same area like that. But in that situation, LaFleur at 6-7 should have had a big advantage. Five oh two remaining. Florida leads 56-13. It jumped out to a 14-0 lead. The Tigers made it a game at 14-6, but it was never close. Oh. Oh. Nemesis Bates took. Exonitis. John Exnitis, third team defensive back, laid out Bates, and he is wobbly. Wow. That is, if you're a free safety 
And I hope Bates is okay, obviously, but if you're a free safety, those are the kind of shots you dream about. Outside receiver comes underneath. That's Bates. He's going to extend for the football. Mm. Wow. You see the head snap back. That, you know, now there, there are a couple schools of thought here. The crown of the helmet is not technically allowed to be used as a weapon. Clearly what they're trying to do is protect people and make you use the front of your, your, your face mask and not the top or the crown of the helmet. That, let's take another look at this in, in regular speed instead of slow motion. Bates underneath the extension in the head. He's one of the best special teams players on this team, and I'm happy to see Bates is okay because that's just good, tough football by Exonita. Well, that's the best picture we've seen today. Bates walking off the field. Exnitis, a junior, physical therapy major. It's like Darth Vader there with the, yes, he the shield. He's from Daytona Beach, and the true freshman Bates who had made an instant impression coming off the bench. Back on the sideline now. Sparacino, a little high and through the hands of LaFleur. Little different pace to the LSU drop back offense with Ferracino in the game. He can look off once or twice, come to come to a secondary receiver. That's a ball LaFleur probably should have caught. Mm. They're checking out Nemesis Bates. They're asking the questions right now, the dreaded questions. Okay, where are we? What day is it? What's the score? Mm. And did you get the number of your nemesis on the other team? Spelled like nemesis, pronounced by nemesis. Couldn't nemesis. Couldn't wait for that, could you? It was a little too easy. That's why we waited a few seconds. So just like a layoff. He was involved in the play. Made sure he was all right as well. Looked like there was movement along the offensive line of LSU. Perhaps the left guard. At the dead ball, illegal There was movement on the offensive line. Yeah, been Ryan Thomas, the reserve guard. He backs up at both guard positions. Sophomore from Galliano, Louisiana. He does play about half the snaps, though, because of his ability to play left or right guard. Only a sophomore. Ball back of the 26th of Florida here in Gator Country on homecoming weekend. The Gators in command. 56-13, leading LSU with 4.48 remaining. Tom McDonough with Mike Mayock and Gus Johnson. Today's game produced by Bob Dekas and directed by Mike Arnold. Barracino on fourth down. They need to reach the 11 for a first down. And Frazier won't get there. The defense. And again, it was Exnitis who made the tackle. Much gentler hit on Frazier than he delivered to Bates a moment ago. And the Gators get it back on down. Now, Sean, we talked a little bit earlier about the polls and saying number one and how much do you have to win by and everything. And, you know, at halftime, it's about 42 to 6. To me, that's plenty mm -hmm. of scoring power, plenty of ability. I, I don't think, sometimes I think the poll, the people that vote are swayed too much by final scores rather than performance. Now, Johnson is a quarterback now. He gave it to McCaslin. In fairness to Florida, they've been rather kind yes, running the have. ball regularly yeah, here have. in the second half. Let's check in with Pat O'Brien. All right, Sean, we'll ask the question, too. What day is it? Where are we? Well, it's big game day, and we'll be in the Orange Bowl for Florida State and Miami. A couple of quarterbacks, you talked about them with a lot on the line here. Ryan Clement of Miami trying to prove himself as another great Miami quarterback. Good today with a win. And Thad Busby for Florida State trying to get Bobby Bowden the first win there since 1984. Big game. The Orange Bowl coming up next year on CBS. It is a big game. Miami looks to be a much improved team, but they haven't really played a challenging schedule yet, Mike, so this will be the, the true test of just how much better they are in the second season under Butch Davis. Yeah, Miami's a little bit of an unknown, and, and on the Florida State side, everybody was screaming for Thad Busby to bring in Dan Kendra behind him. It kind of reminds me of two years ago. They had a young guy by the name of Danny Cannell stepping in at quarterback, struggled early on, but got better and better. And I think the same thing is with, with Busby right now. They have to stay with him. Realize he's your quarterback. Go from there. Ernie DeBose lined up at fullback now in front of Eugene McCaslin. Doug Johnson, a true freshman quarterback, has a man wide open. 
Lafice Kareem out to midfield. 27-yard gain. Doug Johnson, the true freshman from Gainesville, playing for his hometown university. There's, here's the future right here, folks. True freshman from Buckholtz High School here in Gainesville. He's got the classic quarterback arm in motion, unlike Danny Warfel. Gets up on top of the football, 6'3 and a half, about 212 pounds. He's got to come along if these guys are going to stay on the top the next couple of years. sideline at the 44 of LSU knocked out by Cedric Donaldson red shirt freshman from Tampa out of Chamberlain High School and we're down to 248 remaining so three quarterbacks used today by Florida Doug Johnson out of New Holtz High School here in Gainesville drafted in the second round in June by the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in Major League Baseball and actually went to their rookie league team in St. Petersburg for a while this summer. He came back here on August 1st in time for his first preseason football camp of the game. Signals crossed with Aaron McKinney, the third tight end, number 89, was running down the hash mark. He and Johnson weren't on the same page. Michael spoke with Steve Spurrier yesterday about Johnson. He said, he has a great arm, but he doesn't always know where he's throwing it, where he's supposed to throw it. See, in, a, in, a, in an ideal world, you'd like to redshirt him this year. But they don't have that luxury because if anything happened to Warfel, they need somebody to step up and play. And next year, this is the guy they need to play. So they're really pushing his development along. He's getting almost as many snaps in practice as Warfel is. Florida now with 600 yards of total offense today. They go over 600 on the rush by McCaslin. A pass for 327 yards this afternoon. And they've rushed for 277. Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, early edition in Walker, Texas Ranger. The lineup tonight here on CBS on America's Night of Television. All brand new shows tonight. Johnson, the keeper. And he has the first down, the 34th the first down of the game for Florida LSU. Has only 15. The Gators have far surpassed their average. They came in averaging 493 yards of total offense per game. They have over 600 today. LSU, sometimes you're, you're not as good as you look when you win or as bad as you look when you lose, and I think that's one of those situations today. I mean, LSU and Leonardo, they've got to turn around. Look at well, it's definitely true of LSU today. They're a better team than we've seen. <laughs> when you win at Auburn, you're obviously a very good football team. Yes, you are. But I'm not sure that's true the other way. I think Florida probably is pretty close to as good as they have looked today. They have been outstanding and certainly will remain number one. But last year when they were number one and everybody was talking about them like, like they split Adams or something going into the Fiesta Bowl, you know, Nebraska showed that they weren't quite at the level offensively that everybody thought. If you get good enough athletes on the other side of the ball and good enough team, you can still play these guys. Caslin. Wow. Broke several tackles. And it's close to a first down. Damian Toulier, number 91, a reserve defensive tackle. Finally able to make the stop, and it is a first down for McCaslin. There's Toulier, a redshirt freshman out of New Orleans. Well, the LSU Tigers will see their seven-game winning streak snapped here this afternoon. Four to win its 19th straight in the regular season. McCaslin close to another first down. At the 18-yard line, already two rushers, Williams and Taylor. Over 100 yards for the day, and McCaslin is piling up the yardage. Monty Gatlin, a reserve linebacker, made the stop. And all of a sudden, McCaslin's up to 57 yards for the Gators. Final half 
get into the football game. McCaslin carries to the 15. They don't have to run another play. Noah Brindice got a snap or two at quarterback as the fourth QB. He was wearing number 17. Steve Spurrier doesn't want another snap. I don't know. They hustled up there. Who's the quarterback? Handoff goes to the Caslin. And he tried to break into the end zone. Fans disappointed they didn't make it. Number six was a quarterback to answer your question. There is no number six on the Florida depth chart. So that's how deep they went today to their fifth quarterback who's not even listed on the flip charts or materials put out by the outstanding sports information staff here at the University of Florida. 635 yards of offense for Steve Spurrier's team today. Florida goes to 6-0. Oh, the final score, 56-13 over LSU. We'll join Pat O'Brien after this.